Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. When do you want to retire? What age? Take a moment and think about it. And if you would, leave your answer in a comment down below. If I'm being honest, I totally waver on this. Some days I think 55 is the perfect age. It's still young enough to be considered an early retirement, and I feel like my husband and I could then take on that second stage of life full of adventures and travel, not having to worry about getting back to a desk by 8 a.m. on Monday morning. But then I think, I really like what I do. Do I really want to not work at all past the age of 55? Wouldn't I miss it? So maybe just a lighter, more part-time schedule would be better in my golden years, and maybe I would continue to do that into my 70s. And being that I have several decades to figure this out, I'm sure my mind will change a lot along the way. If you're like the typical American, you probably think most retirements commonly begin around the age of 65. And anywhere from 61 to 67, is very common. 65 is also pretty much the typical age for our friends across the pond in Europe. Anything before the age of 60, people tend to think of as an early retirement. Anything closer to 70 or beyond, people tend to think of as a delayed retirement. But consider this, retirement was always supposed to start at 70. The first known retirement age was established way back in the 1880s by German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck. And it was, you guessed it, 70 years old. And it was actually established because railroad workers at this age were causing some issues. First and foremost, the manual labor of these jobs was increasingly difficult for men at these ages and beyond, but notably, some of them were falling asleep at the switches. And that was leading to train wrecks, not great for business or public appeal. But when these men were hired, they were promised employment for life, so they and their families were depending on this paycheck, so you can't just turn around and fire them for a train wreck or two, apparently. So what to do? you create an opportunity for a dignified exit. And thus, the first pension was established. And being that life expectancy at this time wasn't that much longer, the system wasn't designed to have to pay out for that long. And later, in 1916, the pension age, and thus retirement age, was lowered to 65 to further protect against workplace accidents being attributed to old age. During this time, England followed in Germany's footsteps and established a retirement age of 70, and then subsequently lowered it to 65. And the US jumped on this bandwagon as well, and Congress set the retirement age for railroad workers at 65, and thus 65 became the age that we associate with retirement, officially and unofficially. Over 100 years later, that is still the age that most people tend to think of. So if you answered that first question of when should you retire by saying the age of 65, Maybe you missed your calling as a railroad worker. These days, pensions are far less common, and many people are ill-prepared for retirement, at least financially, when that time comes. And that's why many say we're facing a retirement crisis, in which the National Council on Aging estimates that some 47 million older Americans, or 80% of the elderly, could fall on economic hard times. Perhaps shifting that retirement age back upwards would be helpful. This would give people more time to build up a nest egg to support themselves when they no longer have a paycheck. But mentally shifting that barometer to a higher age is hard. After all, by the age of 70, a full 81% of workers have left the workforce. And routinely, you see people estimate that they will retire later than they actually do. However, when people expect to retire often depends on their current age. Younger workers tend to think they'll retire at younger ages, whereas older workers tend to think that they'll retire at older ages. And a lot of this probably hinges on finances. Maybe you hit the age of 59, and maybe your retirement nest egg isn't where you quite want it to be so you continue working. Or maybe you find enjoyment in your work, so simply you just wish to continue. Maybe it's a mixture of these and other reasons. And all of this brings us to the most important retirement table you will ever see, part two. I have to say part two because this exact headline was used about a year ago on a different table. And here's the table. It's a compounding interest table showing what a hypothetical $500 monthly investment could grow to over 20, 30, 40, or even 50 years. While not disclosed, it appears the author uses a rate of return in the ballpark of 6.5%. This table does bring up an important point about wealth creation, and that centers around compound interest. After all, there are really two guaranteed paths to wealth, 
You can either make a lot of money or you can have a long time horizon. That latter path is definitely going to be the more common approach to wealth creation. Quite simply, the more time you give your investments to grow, the more money you're gonna have. That's how compounding works. We hear it over and over and over again that you wanna start investing early. Invest whatever amount you can because those early amounts are capable of incredible growth. Consider that a single $10,000 investment left alone for 50 years could grow to nearly half a million dollars. That shows the power of compounding. And for those who don't start early with their first job and their very first paycheck, you can always delay retirement. That extends your compounding horizon on the other end by leaving your money invested. For instance, a worker who invested from the age of 20 to the age of 55 invested for 35 years, and one who invests from the age of 30 to 65 still invests for 35 years. Assuming they invested in the same calendar years, they're gonna end up with a very similar nest egg. Starting earlier and retiring earlier doesn't actually provide any additional magic. What I really like about this table is that it shows the potential and the power of leaving your money invested for much longer than what is considered a traditional time frame, 35 or 40 years, giving the option of a 50-year investment horizon. This is really only made possible if you start young, say around the age of 20, and then continue working and contributing to your investments until what is considered a delayed retirement around the age of 70 or so. And this can be a very real possibility for the younger generations, as each generation has tended to start investing earlier and earlier. Giving yourself this longer time horizon is a great way to guarantee yourself success in the wealth building process. Now, I tend to use an 8% rate of return when I do these compound projections. I do so simply because the long-term rate of return in the market is 10%, and then I discount that. You can be as aggressive or as conservative as you would like when it comes to your own projections. But if you use a $500 monthly investment and an 8% rate of return over a 50 year investment horizon, that would grow to 3.5 million. Even a lesser investment of $250 a month would grow to almost $2 million. Now that's why I say with a longer time horizon, you cannot screw this up. You are practically guaranteed success. Now the added bonus of this longer time horizon is that it kind of gives you grace in life which is good because life is unpredictable. There are gonna be times when you're capable of saving more. And then there's gonna be times when your budget is so stretched thin that your savings rate just takes a dive. For instance, it's likely to be easier to save when you're a young dual income couple with no kids or a D-I-N-K as people are calling it these days. And no, I will not say it because I hate that term. One, it just sounds like an insult, but if you look up the etymology of the word, it actually is a derogatory term for an ethnic group that now hipsters are trying to turn into a cool little phrase. I am not for it, it just doesn't sit well with me. It's also gonna be easier to save when you're an empty nester and in your peak earning years. On the other hand, it can be quite hard to save when you're a young couple balancing a young family and a mortgage. At different times of life, fully expect that you will have different savings rates. It's highly unlikely that you're gonna find anyone who contributes $500 a month every single month for 50 years. That would be the equivalent of spotting a unicorn. Let's consider one more example. Let's say you started investing at the age of 20 and you do invest that $500 a month and you do that until you're 35. So for 15 years. By that time, your investments would grow to about $170,000. But then let's say life gets hectic and expensive, so you pause your investments for a full 10 years. You don't withdraw them, but you don't contribute either. 10 years pass and your investments grow to about $370,000 thanks to compounding interest. Not too shabby. After those 10 years, let's say that life gets less hectic and less expensive. So you resume your $500 monthly contributions and you do that for 25 years or until the age of 70. Now your investments would grow to almost $3 million. Keep in mind, if you had invested $500 a month every single month for 50 years, your investments would have reached 3.5 million. Taking those 10 years off in the middle really didn't hurt you all that much. And that's the beauty of a long time horizon. Maybe you really do want to retire early and that's a great goal. You're just gonna have to save more aggressively than someone who's willing to delay retirement. 
For many, delaying retirement is a very real solution. It gives your money more time to grow. And in an age where many jobs are less surrounding manual labor and potential train wrecks, this can be a viable option. And also consider that just delaying your retirement one year can boost your standard of living anywhere from five to 10%. And it seems like it is worth considering. So you still wanna get invested early, but maybe you're willing to let it stay invested just a little bit longer. Let me know your thoughts on retiring around the age of 70 in a comment down below or what you think the most ideal age is. I post new videos every single week. If you get anything at all out of these, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing or if you know of someone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you soon. Bye.